Hi, this presentation is from SRM Dental College, Department of Pharmacology. I am Dr. Vinodini. I am going to discuss regarding Xylagox and anti Xylagox in this PPT. Xylagox. What are Xylagox? These are the agents actually that are being used in the treatment of xerostomia or dry mouth. So when there is xerostomia or dry mouth, when these drugs are being given, they stimulate the functioning salivary gland and tend to produce more saliva. Before we say about the xylagox, we, we should have an idea about xerostomia and hyposalivation. This is xerostomia. So xerostomia is the subjective term actually, sensation of dry mouth it has been sensed by the patient. It is a combination of the signs and symptoms and it includes the decrease in the secretion of saliva. Whereas hyposalivation is actually used to denote the salivary flow rate decrease. So when there is decrease in the flow rate of saliva, hyposalivation occurs. And xerostomia refers to the sensation, subjective sensation. Causes. What are the different causes that can lead to this xerostomia? So there are some disease states, like Jogren syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder. And because of some infiltration in the salivary glands, they are causing this xerostomia. The other disease states are the pathological conditions which can also lead to the xerostomia, dry mouth, or rheumatoid arthritis, pernicious anemia, diabetes, insipidus. And next, radiation therapy. Head and neck radiation therapy actually induces xerostomia causes. Nearly 20% of the patients are going for xerostomia after head and neck radiation therapy. There are certain drugs actually that also causes xerostomia as an adverse effect and the drugs are anticholinergic drugs, otherwise anti-muscarinic drugs which blocks the muscarinic receptors, antihistamines, say H1 histamine receptor blockers and antidepressants like tricyclic antidepressants also causes xerostomia as their adverse effect. And aging process, as a natural aging process can also lead to the development of this xerostomia. Now, what are the complications that can occur when the xerostomia dry mouth occurs? So, we all know that our saliva has a bactericidal effect. So, when it goes, when the level of saliva goes down in our body, there is a chance of caries and periodontal diseases development. So the increase, there is an increased risk for the arisal of these conditions. Not only the fungal infections can also occur due to the decreased salivary rate. And for neutralizing the acids, the buffer effect of saliva is needed. So if that is not there, the neutralizing acids can lead to tooth enamel demineralization. The other complications that can occur are reduced tension wearing time and difficulty in swallowing and speaking. Patient may not be able to swallow the uh, food what they are taking because saliva is needed for the mastication purpose and for speaking. It causes hindrance and other uh, oral conditions like stomatitis, burning term also can occur due to this xerostomia. So, how are we going to treat this xerostomia hyposalivation conditions uh, when basically dry mouth? So, there are certain drugs, the multiple modal therapy that are being for uh, the treatment of xerostomia, but mainly we rely on pharmacotherapy. This is the drugs. So, the main group of drugs that are being used in the treatment of xerostomia are the parasympathomimetic drugs or otherwise the muscarinic or cholinergic drugs. How these drugs are able to increase the salivary secretion? When these drugs are given, they act on the M3 receptors. There is a muscarinic M3 receptor that is situated in the oral cavity and cause increased salivary flow. So not all the cholinergic drugs are being approved for these purposes. Only 
one drug there is a main drug which is being approved and being successful uh, in the treatment of xerostomia is pilocarpin so how we are going to give this pilocarpin as a 5 to 10 mg tablet it has to be taken one hour before food and has to be taken three times daily so with a maximum dose of 30 mg per day this pilocarpin can be given to a patient in the next silagog of uh, most successful rate uh, which is being administered is 7 million. So <clears throat> this 7 million is mainly indicated for the dry mouth syndrome that is seen with the Jogren syndrome patients. And the recommended dose with this is 30 mg 3 times a day. Uh, one advantage about 7 million is it acts particularly or selectively on salivary glands and it does not produce any undesirable adverse effects over the pilocarpin. The other silocops uh, which can also be used and has been shown some uh, success rates are your bethanicol. Bethanicol has been shown to reduce the secretion. So it has to be shown to increase the secretion which has been actually decreased by the antidepressants and the antipsychotic drugs and it can be given four times a day as a 10 to 50 mg tablet. The other products which can also be used as a salivary substitutes what they generally do is they contain the water electrolytes and the other proteins and the other things which actually maintains the humidity of the coral mucosa and the products that actually has are been supplied as carboxymethyl cellulose, hydroxymethyl cellulose, mucins and other sweetening enzymes and preservatives. In some of the products, fluoride is also being added up to increase the salivary rate and all these products are available in different formulations, available in different formulations like solutions, gels, tablets, aspirin. And they can be administered as many times as possible by the patients so that they can maintain the humidity of the oral mucosa. Antisilagogs. What are these antisilagogs? These are the substances which actually act opposite to that of silagogs. So these drugs decreases the production of saliva. Why we should actually decrease the production of saliva? This is needed. They have to be used in the conditions like siluria and prudent. What is siluria? Siluria is a hypersecretory salivary secretion condition where it is being measured by quantitatively, quantitatively by the silometry uh, apparatus. Whereas drooling is actually not the hypersecretory condition. It is actually a non-controllable where is the and disturbed handling of saliva causes drooling. So drooling sometimes occurs normally in the infants and the toddlers due to teething purpose but that can be actually controlled. But other drooling purposes is mainly occurring due to the uncontrollable handling of the saliva. What are the causes for the siluria and drooling? So many pathological conditions are being uh, uh, causes this and to name a few myasthenia gravis, cerebral palsy, facial paralysis, motor neuron disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis and heavy metal poisoning. Almost all heavy metal poisoning induces copious secretion of saliva and they stimulate the salivary gland excessively leading to the excessive secretion of saliva. The other causes <coughs> esophageal spasms, tumors and ulcers, ulcerations. All uh, painful conditions or oral conditions that are being associated also causes this increase in the salivary secretions like herpes, pulpitis, periodontitis, traumatitis, etc. Now the other main uh, factors that actually causes this siloria are the drugs. Many drugs have been reported, but uh, clinically significant uh, increase in salivary production has been reported with cholinergic drugs. Uh, it may be a direct uh, cholinergic drug or the indirect cholinergic drugs. 
whatever it is all the uh, cholinergic drugs increases the secretion of saliva antipsychotic drugs haloperidol and other drugs and sedative hypnotics like diazepam also causes the increase in the salivary secretion so when there is saliva or drool so that has to be controlled properly and that can be achieved with the help of that uncontrolled saliva and drooling can be controlled with the help of anti saliva and the drugs which have been approved for uh, controlling the saliva and drooling are atropin scopolamine glycopyrrolate and oxyphenonium there are some statements regarding some anti saliva causes more adr adverse effects and that is actually causing more risk but somehow these drugs are being approved for the usage of saliva and drooling. If excessive saliva is there, uncontrollable saliva, then we can use one of these drugs to control the salivary secretions. Atropin, it can, it can be given orally. In some of the trials, it has been used even sublingually and it has to uh, produce a promising effect when it has been administered as a sublingual drug. Scopolamine. Uh, normally, it has been applied as a transdermal patch and not only as transdermal, it has also been available orally. When it has been nebulized as a spray, this copalamine has been producing more anti effect. Glycopyrrolate and oxyphenonium are also find their place and they are being used in some pre-anesthetic medication condition also. And they are being successfully used. Many newer drugs are being coming into use, but their clinical studies are yet to be proven. The clinical study, the anti saliva effect of them are yet to be proven in these studies. Thank you.